You probably know Central America as that breathtaking strip of amazing countries with vibrant cities, turquoise coastlines, and of course, a bunch of delightful ways to speak Spanish. But can you tell one Central American Spanish accent from the next? There are only seven of them, so I'm expecting top marks. Chucho es un perrito en Salvador y Guatemala y en Honduras es tacaño y a Jesús le dicen Chucho con tantas definiciones como se usa esa pucha palabra. But look, I have to warn you, in this part of the world, Spanish has a mind of its own, so pay attention, and if you think you know the accent, put your guess in the comments. Imagine you're out looking for people to practice Spanish with, and you bump into one of these guys. That is a risk you take walking into this video, I warn you. Que venga a este país, porque es un país pacífico, donde no tiene ningún problema, que lo vamos a atender con mucho cariño, con mucho amor, it's the most visited nation in Central America and a dream location to practice your Spanish, although probably not with an eyelash viper. Oropel, that's what the locals call him. Hay personas aquí que me han dicho que se parece mucho al, al acento de Colombia. Es verdad, hay ciertas regiones de Colombia que eh, tienen cierta similitud a la hora de entonar o de como cantar las palabras y así. The pronunciation here is influenced by some pretty old regional dialects. Spanish colonization to the area began in the 1500s and over time Spanish became the dominant language. But as always, a lot of other things happened first. When the Spaniards arrived, they found Mayans and Aztecs who spoke an absolute ton of languages. Many of the tribes ran away into the mountains, and today there are only about 64,000 indigenous people left, but they weren't the only newcomers. It's been a very popular spot with Caribbean fishermen since the 1800s. They'd stay here in temporary camps during fishing season, plant fields of cassava, coconuts, yams, and breadfruit, and sail back to harvest them later. It sounds fantastic, but what I want to know is, weren't they scared of pirates? Well, someone was, but let's save the pirates for later. Dicen que el que vive amargado se arruga un montón y este, pues este, usted pasa desestresado porque al estar sembrando usted cultivos y verlos como van creciendo, usted se se contenta y y este, y chiste y hace gozar a la gente cuando uno está muy ocupado trabajando y con compañeros y que dice que feo que está esto, usted ya cuenta un chiste y ya todos empiezan a gozar y Nowadays there are eight indigenous groups left and some Afro-Caribbeans, but most people are Spanish and mestizos. Amazingly, even though the country is tiny, each region has its own dialect or accent, but people generally speak Spanish very clearly here. Quechua basically means that's really awesome, that's really cool. When you see a beautiful beach like this, you say Quechua, que jeta, like que jeta. That gallo pinto is really, really big. Que grande ese gallo pinto. But there's one big thing that always gives them away. Y que definitivamente está en peligro de extinción si no cuidamos nuestros bosques. Muchísimas gracias por este regalo. Vamos a ponérmela aquí para que... Did you catch that? Barely any rolled R's. None of that stuff. They pronounce their R's a lot like English and other Spanish speakers often say they sound like gringos. If you still don't know where we are, well, their most awesome expression is... Pura vida is the word that you'll you're here as soon as you get off the plane, and basically it means many things. It means pure life, but more than anything, it's a philosophy that we live with of happiness and being chill and relaxed. But also, it can be a question and an answer. You can say, pura vida, and you can answer, pura vida. Well, that is a dead giveaway. It is only a tico term. Pura vida epitomizes Costa Rican Spanish. Remember it the next time you're dodging those fluttering eyelashes. Yo voy a ser presentadora de TV. Yo voy a ser pediatra. Yo voy a ser artista. Cuando esté grande voy a ser una enfermera. It is known as the land of volcanoes, and when you wander the streets, you see men wearing jeans and cowboy hats and boots, and apparently they're really into their hammocks. Legend goes that the Native Americans started this, because with so many earthquakes rocking the ground, lying in a hammock, was the only way to get your siesta. Number chele. Mira, 
Ese un lado, ah, ese, ese. It is the most populated of all the Central American countries. Most people are mestizos and they call themselves salvis and guanacos. Spanish is the official language and virtually everyone speaks it. We don't say, he's so shy. We say, es que este bichito si es huyo, híjole. And I think that's pretty beautiful. We don't say, hey, can you borrow me some money? We say, hey, Bumaje, ¿crees que me puedes prestar pisto? Es que quiero una charamusca. Don't you love old photos like this? Well, many fascinating empires have passed through and existed here. There used to be a dominant tribal group called the Pipil, and this is pretty cool. Even though most of their languages are close to extinction, there is one language called Nahuatl that refuses to die. <laughs> So sweet! This is what the Pipil community was speaking when the Spanish first arrived, and in the west of the country you can still hear a few elderly people speak it. Most of them also speak Spanish, so a lot of Nahuatl words kind of sneak in. No tengo pisto. Esta expresión es muy utilizada, especialmente a mitad del mes. No tengo pisto. Well, I don't know if they do this in the other countries, but here they have a name for the local Spanish dialect, caliche. It's full of slang words and expressions like this. Así es la onda. Literal translation, the wave is like this. But it actually means, así es la onda, this is the situation. Así es la onda. Here's a fun one. If you think someone is eavesdropping on your conversation, you can say, Hay pericos en la mipa. By the way, certain sounds in Spanish are completely different in this neck of the jungle. All over Central America, I mean. Pronunciation. The C and the C sound are pronounced differently. Barcelona? Barcelona. That's right, remember not to lisp your C's, th, like the Spaniards do. Another very common thing is, instead of tu, you, they use vos, which is the more formal, old-fashioned version. If the setting is formal, they might use usted, to show respect. So if you hear tu, sorry, they're on to you. They will know instantly that you are a foreigner. Ay, la mona. Agarratelo. Cometa. Cometelo. Cometa. Andamos aquí que vamos a ver la mona. Mamacita. Qué linda. Venga. Vení, hombre. Y no te voy a hacer nada. Vení. ¿Cómo te llamas? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm hearing a lot of disappearing sounds in there. It's the only Central American nation with a Caribbean coast. It is the tiniest of all the countries, El Salvador. Now, before we carry on, are you interested in learning Spanish? Perhaps you've tried to learn Spanish in the past, but didn't get very far. Maybe it's been on your bucket list for ages. Well, I've created a 10-day challenge to start learning Spanish, and I'd like to invite you to join. Now, the 10-day challenge lasts, wait for it, 10 days, and you'll get one lesson a day that lasts only 10 minutes. And my promise is that by the end of the 10 days, you will have tried out my unique method of language learning called story learning, and will not believe how much Spanish you've managed to learn in a very short time. Like one student who said, I learned more in your 10 day challenge than 620 days doing Duolingo. So whether you've been dreaming of learning Spanish for years, you've got a trip coming up, maybe you've tried and struggled to learn in the past, my 10 day challenge is perfect for you as you'll discover a more natural way to learn Spanish using stories not rules. And it's also perfect for you if you don't have much time and you just want to try something that you know works. So if you're ready to get started with Spanish and you've got 10 minutes a day, then join my new 10-day Spanish challenge today. Right now we are running a big discount offer on the challenge, so it's the perfect time. There's a link in the description which you can click to find out more. Hola, hola a todos. Bendiciones de acá de Belicia hacia todos que me están viendo en Europa, en los Estados, a todos. Bendiciones, tres mano de aquí del país de Belicia. If you want to meet the most astonishing birds on the planet, well, stop right here. Ah, oh, what am I talking about? They're all over Central America. The toucans probably have their own dialects to declare who belongs in what forest. And if you dare to go wandering out there alone, better stay on your boat. But there is one thing that makes this tiny little country different from the rest. It's the only part of Central America that doesn't have Spanish as an official language. In fact, you're probably going to hear a lot of this. In September celebration of the Empezamos preparations is the June. Empezando con the float from the costume de todo ese gather of todo eso. Like, es una de esas major celebrations.
Sounds familiar, does it? Well, try taking Spanglish a step further. Mix the three main languages, English, Spanish, and Creole, and you get this Spanglishol. Wait, there's a Creole? So back in the days, she say, Creole can't find slaves. All the slaves they need to get her, and they create their own language. So the white man, the white masters, or slave owners never understand me. Now I don't know much, but this the whole way I know, this the way I've been told by my granny. How cool is that? People do speak Spanish though, it's the main language in the North and the West. No importa, papi, tú me cambiaste por una más flaquita. Está bien, pero yo te cambié por uno que la tenía más gorda. La tuya me bailaba, lo que me daba pena decirte. The South has more Mayan and Garifuna language, although Spanish has replaced Yucatec Maya in many communities. Kept some interesting loan words for Spanish though. Nos muéramos, no estamos muertos, solo estamos durmiendo, solo tenemos cerrado el ojo. Entonces, cuando nos llaman a los tres días, cuando nos hacen el rosario, nos llaman los tres días, nosotros nos, es cuando vamos a llorar, vamos a pegar un llanto. Culturally, they're usually identified as Caribbean rather than Central American, but it's not a typical Caribbean country, nor a typical Central American country. It's the beautiful land of the black orchid, Belize. And if you don't want the Jaguars to get you tonight, well, click like and subscribe, why don't you? Todo empieza antes de mis 37 años. Porque antes de mis 37 años, ¿por qué vine aquí? Amo el sur. Amo a mi familia. Y sobre todo amo a Dios. Creo mucho en Dios. Y creo que todo pasa por algo. Y vengo de una lesión. Una lesión que me alejó prácticamente de todo. Super lo que era valorar, tal vez caminar, correr. It is a surfing mecca, and if you're a surfer, well, sorry, I just gave it away, didn't I? You know where the epic waves are, or is it the epic volcanoes? You, you seeing this madness? There is a local word for that, acalambrado. It means being freaked out or terrified by something. So if you'd rather just go for a nice safe walk, you can say, ir a pincel. Wait, is that even Spanish? Well, it is here. They certainly have their unique words and sayings. Espérame, te voy a enviar el número por WhatsApp. Ya te lo mando. Solo lo voy a buscar en mi teléfono y te lo mando. Oye, espérame. Ya te... Mi teléfono. Mi teléfono, Dios mío. Mi teléfono, señor. Mi te... Lo dejé allá. Seguramente lo dejé allá, Dios mío. Some things are the same everywhere. It was the only country in Latin America to be colonized by both the Spanish and the British. So the population is made up mostly of boa constrictors, monkeys, wild boars, sea turtles, uh, I mean, I meant mestizos. Remember that word, mestizos. Now, if you haven't been here, you might never have heard people speaking like this. Para decir, es fácil. Ellos dicen, eso es chiche. No se dice, eres chismoso o eres chismosa. Se dice, sos bien tú la maje. Si eres principiante, pues no te van a llamar eso. Te dicen, estás charquito, loco. Tampoco se dice, pareces tonto. No, ellos te dicen, pareces jugado de cegua. Love learning local phrases, don't you? Some of the most common indigenous languages around here are misquito, sumo, and rama. In misquito, certain sounds like e, o, and f don't even exist. So can you imagine Spanish with a misquito accent? Cuando quieres decir cómo está en misquito, dice nasquisma. Cuando quieres decir a dónde va, que de eso se dice dónde va ya. Val Nara, venga para acá, o para acá en otras palabras. Al ver que nuestro equipo está ganando, decimos Winamba, que al español traducido significa dale, dale, dale palo, dele más. Jang Niniba, Jennifer Lakut, Aizabe. Hello, my name is Jennifer Lakut, goodbye. Man Ali Wina, where are you from? On the Caribbean coast, they also speak English, so we know what English means by now. Creole. Another thing you'll notice is they have a habit of dropping the S in connecting words. So you get lolo, lolo, instead of los dos. Hear that? La chela. Y de ahí. También dame el teléfono. Really? Pasame esa chochada. Ahora solo querés andar de bacanal. By the way, if you're learning Spanish at all, don't worry at all about not being understood in Central America. They will understand you perfectly fine. Probably the one thing they might find hilarious is if you use the Spanish lisp when you order a beer, like cerveza. But you're not going to do that in Central America, are you? Even if you do, nobody cares. You're still going to get your beer. So have you figured out where we are yet? Well, it is the home of the gorgeous Emerald Coast, Nicaragua. Yo pienso que cuando hay muchas personas, cuando hay muchos jóvenes, se le llama la muchachada. 
entonces dice, ah, es que toda la muchachada tal y tal cosa. Eh, entonces imagino yo que igual para referirse a un, a un grupo, poco a poco fueron disminuyendo, sí. terminando en mucha. Entonces es eh, mucha, vamos a comer algo. Mucha, vamos a hacer un video engordante. What are chapines? You tell me. I don't know if you noticed, but he speaks Spanish pretty fast. It is the birthplace of chocolate. And if you're looking for ruins of ancient Mayan civilizations, this country will absolutely blow your mind. Just don't step on the, you know, the bar constrictor. But I'm still waiting for the pirate story. When can I tell this pirate story? Now listen to this. There are 22 Mayan languages here, 22, as well as two non-Mayan Amerindian languages, one indigenous and one from the Caribbean coast. It was not easy for Spanish to make its mark here, but of course it did, heavily influenced by native languages though. This is a very big language, the second most widely spoken in the country after Spanish, and most speakers are bilingual, which definitely affects their Spanish pronunciation. Meaning Spanish has picked up certain Mayan sounds unique to this country. Pretty cool and lots of great words to learn, especially starting with ch or sh. Your favorite jacket, it is a chumpa. So interesting. Well, I can speak one of her languages. Quick story. One day in the 1600s, a ship headed for somewhere got wrecked in the Grenadines and the surviving West African slaves ended up on the island of St. Vincent. They mixed with the Caribbean locals and the new culture was called Garifuna. Fíjate que no me enseñaron. Eso ya es algo que, que cuando vas a venir de niño lo venís, te vienen hablando tus papás que, y vos tenés que hacerle, ¿me entendés? Es algo que, que viene ya de raíz. Bien es importante. Bien es importante el garismo. ¿no? Saber tu lengua es importante. Ah, porque es algo que viene de raíz de ti, es de tus ancestros, es, es, es algo que... Their mixed language picked up a lot of French terms before the Spanish deported them all to Central America. So whenever I mention Garifuna or Afro-Caribbean, now you know what I'm talking about. So what do you think, guys? With all these different languages hanging around, Spanish must be really hard to follow, right? Well, no. The way people pronounce words is actually quite similar across the country. So if you're getting any adventurous ideas, just go for it. Grammar-wise, they have some quirks. Like if you want to say, I'm going to meet my friend, it's Voy a ver a un mi amigo. Very, very non-standard in Spanish. And what was the meaning of that word from the beginning? Do you remember? Chapines. It's what the people of this amazing country call themselves. Chapines. Frase donde el sol sale cuadrado y lo redondeamos a punta de machete. Es un placer. Mi nombre es Nayeli Tax y represento el departamento de Retauleo. Y les quiero decir que nosotros somos bien de huevos. Yayu y culito. I've just given you two city names, so yeah. We are in... Guatemala. By the way, if you've been thinking of learning Spanish yourself, maybe you've already started, I would like to invite you to discover our story learning method. It's a way to learn Spanish through a very cool teaching method using stories. You see, here we are on a mission to help you learn a new language like Spanish fast. And the way we do that is with stories that help you uncover the world around you in a natural way, just like you learned when you were a child. You see, you remember Spanish words more easily when you're engrossed in a story, and the language just makes sense to your brain naturally. We've already helped more than 10,000 students learn this way, so if you'd like to see exactly how it all works, you can simply check out my free story learning kit. It's linked in the description, so when you're done guessing your Spanish accents, go grab it, it's completely free. More dangerous stories up ahead. You ready? Me siento triste porque en veces hay saqueadores que lo sacan, en veces hay animales que lo comen. Being a protector of parrots. How do people even have jobs like this? Amazing. Well, parrots make me think of pirates. See what I did there? And once upon a time, there was so much pirate activity here that I'm surprised Spanish survived at all. In fact, this country was the most notorious pirate den of all. But first, let's hear another accent. Tratamos de ser unidos acá, pero ya cuando ya vimos que habían muchos problemas aquí en nuestra comunidad, ya los jóvenes empezaron a mirar para otro lado porque aquí era éramos tan felices, iban a jugar básquet, habían fiestas y todo. Y eso lo hizo los muchachos a irse de acá y casi la mayoría que estamos acá, casi somos las maestras 
las personas mayores. So for centuries, horrible pirates like Blackbeard had a bad habit of raiding Spanish galleons in these seas. And, and once they figured out that the mangrove forests and hidden coves were the perfect hiding spots for pirate ships, there was no stopping them. One day, the infamous Welsh pirate Henry Morgan decided to get rid of the Spanish settlers once and for all. So he and his crew sacked a certain city, looted the treasure and killed them all. But what happened to the language, Spanish? I reckon Captain Morgan would be pretty upset to hear the news. Yo aprendí desde niña aquí en mi comunidad, involucrándome con gente mayores, a jóvenes, a niños. Siempre estoy con mi brazo abierto para enseñar lo poco que mis ancestros me han enseñado también. Tenemos que grabar para que nuestros niños, los que vienen, escuchen las canciones y que no pierdan lo que es nuestra cultura. Cuando nosotros cantamos lo hacemos con nuestra alma abierta para que todo el mundo lo escuche y que todo el mundo sepa que nuestra cultura todavía vive. But before Spanish was even here, most people spoke the Lenca language when they weren't speaking their second and third languages, that is. Today, almost everyone, of course, speaks Spanish and even the Lenca people lost their languages. I just love that name, Jaguar people. It's very, very cool. Thank goodness there are still a few indigenous languages around. Primera palabra, Naxa. Esto quiere decir hola o también puede ser qué tal. Segunda palabra es nazquisma. Esto quiere decir cómo estás. Y como última palabra tenemos kaikiwas. Kaikiwas quiere decir que te vaya bien o que vaya con cuidado. Es una forma de despedirse. Lovely language. Let's see what's going on with the Spanish. Another particular thing is that they drop S's and they replace them with the sound of H in English or J in Spanish. So, ¿cómo está? ¿Cómo está? Dropping the S is really common, especially in the South, and many locals think it's a linguistic heritage of those pirates. I mean, I don't know how that works, but why not? I'm all about the stories. They say things like, ¿cómo tú estás? instead of, ¿cómo estás? And like Guatemala, a lot of their expressions start with CH. So we have chuco, which is dirty. Chepos, these are the cups. Chingo is when a piece of clothing is too small for you. Honestly, though, they are very clear Spanish speakers, quite laid back, just full of interesting things. To make them special... El tío mío tiene una canilla de pinga. <laughs> ¿Qué significa eso? Una canilla, uh -huh. para nosotros, son como una pata flaca. Okay, mi artis, you're down to only two countries, so this really can't be hard. The accent here is from a fabulous place called Honduras, with my best British accent. And now, drum roll, a test for those who have never been on a pirate raid and therefore have no clue about geography. Nosotros lo que hacemos aquí, como una pequeña organización, por ejemplo, como para recibir los visitantes como ustedes, Para ejemplo, esta casa es como una escuela de los niños aprenden lo que los adultos hacen. Forget pirates, this country has 2,000 snake bites a year. That's about 1,500 more than Costa Rica's snake bites. But I think you're going to like the accent. ¿Qué arroz con plata mi tajada? ¿Qué es eso, huevao? A mí ahora me lasaña. Sea. Spaghetti, you know, sea well. As with the others, the indigenous languages spice up the local Spanish, and there are seven recognized indigenous groups, each with their own language and culture. Many people also speak Creole languages that evolved from Spanish and African languages, like Palenquero and Wadi Wadi. Y a los niños les cuestan, les cuestan entender o comprender. The country has a very interesting language culture. There's a ton of history with the US and the way they speak reflects this. So you might hear words borrowed from English like parquear. But if that's all Spanglish to you, well, I can do better. On the streets, you learn very interesting expressions like this. Okay, maybe you don't use that one, but if you know a person who's always tripping or dropping things, you can say that they are chombon. Want to hear some different accents from around the country? Of course you do. Yo hago bastante, yo me cuido mucho por el... Pues yo siento que no tengo buena genética, para nada. Yo voy al gimnasio, voy a la estética, hago dieta, pero estrictamente, disciplinadamente, ¿no? O sea, tiene que mandarlo ahí si yo estaba ahorrando data. Ah, ni un pobre, pues. Es un sufrido, loco. Oh. 
Guau, wow, de peladita. Y tú también, vivo, ¿viste? O te coge allá afuera. Acabo de dejar mi trip de Buenaventura con mis brothers y mis pasieros, pero para decirte algo súper importante, man. Pero no te preocupes, yo voy a regresar, man. Mi viejo me viene a buscar mi helicóptero, así que don't worry. Many of those city people are fluent in English, by the way. I don't know if you can hear, but they lose a lot of letters, like the D sound between vowels. So Rosado becomes Rosao, and Morado becomes Morao. But one really weird thing they do is reversing the order of the syllables. So if you hear a word like Mopri, and you have no idea what that is, neither would I, try switching the syllables around. Okay, it's not Mopri, it's Primo. Or they'll greet you with Que Sopa instead of Que Paso. Switching things around, you see? It's all part of the vibe, don't worry, you'll get it eventually. I think that all the indigenous communities nos communicate oralmente. Y la, eh, el audio interactivo, como es sonido y nuestra cultura es oral, eh, siento que nos, puede, nos ayuda muchísimo al estar escuchando siempre te, esta manera didáctica de aprender otro idioma. What I haven't mentioned yet is that this dialect is actually considered a variety of Caribbean Spanish, or at least halfway there. And with all this American influence, we can only be in one place. It's Panama. Did you get it? Let us know your tally in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, well, this is the one you should check out next. We think you are really, really, really gonna like it.